Good morning. This is Tuesday, November 9th, and I'd like to wish uh, our brother Steve Farron a happy birthday. <clears throat> Steve, I hope you have a good day. Go out and treat yourself to something nice and uh, celebrate the uh, blessings in your life that God has given you. I'd also like to wish my sister-in-law, Wanda Davidson, a uh, happy birthday. Hope you have a great day, Wanda. The, today's devotion is Sacred Service. This is Colossians 1. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Jesus. The Christian worker has to be a sacred go-between. He must be so closely identified with his Lord and the reality of redemption through Jesus that Christ can continually bring his creating life through him. It's called walking in the Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit says go left, you go left. If he says go right, you go right. We have to be so tuned in with the Lord that we will just do whatever he asks us to do when he asks us to do it. And I'm not referring to the strength of one individual's personality being superposed onto another, but the real presence of, of Christ coming through every aspect of that person's life. When we preach the historical facts of the life and death of our Lord as they are conveyed in the New Testaments, in the New Testament, our word is made sacred. God uses these words, made sacred by the Holy Spirit, on the basis of his redemption to create something in those who listen. That's called the wooing of the Holy Spirit. And I love that because even that we can't do. We can't, in ourselves, we can't decide to get up and go get saved. It has to be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's saying. He uses those words, those sacred words from the preacher. The Holy Spirit infuses himself into those. We hear it and we are wooed by the Holy Spirit to change, to go get saved those who listen, which otherwise could never have been created. If we simply preach the effects of redemption in the human life, instead of the revealed divine truth regarding Jesus, the result is not new birth in those who listen. The result will be a refined religious lifestyle. And the Spirit of God cannot witness to it because such preachings is in the realm of humanity, not his realm, but in the humanity's realm. We must make sure that we are living in such harmony with God that as we proclaim his truth, he can create in others those things which only he alone can do. That's salvation, that's giving gifts, that's, that's maturing us as Christians. When we say what a wonderful personality, what a fascinating person, or what wonderful insights, then what opportunity does the gospel then have to get through all of that? We have brought such high praise to the person the Holy Spirit now has to work through all of that to even get in touch with the person to talk to them about God. It cannot get through, because the attraction is to the messenger and not to the message. If a person attracts through his personality, that becomes his appeal. If, however, he is identified with the Lord Jesus Christ, as he challenged us at the beginning, then the appeal becomes what Christ can do for that person, not the person preaching. The danger is to glory in men, yet Jesus says we are to lift up only him. That's John 12. The challenge I have is, do we walk freely in the Holy Spirit? Do we really walk in the Spirit, wherein if he asks us to turn left, we'll turn left. If he says go right, we'll go right. And a lot of you know my stories of listening to the Spirit over, over seemingly silly things and watching God use those down the road just a few hours to change somebody's life. So are we listening to the Holy Spirit and doing as he asks? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you watch us this closely and that I pray today that all of us would be so in tune with your Spirit that if you say go left, we'll just go left without question. We'll do whatever you ask us to do. Because Lord, at the end of that left or the end of that right, somebody needs Jesus. So perhaps our obedience will bring about a moment of salvation where you can be glorified. We give you this day and we give you these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless and I'll see you tomorrow.